Welcome to the Bolt Buzz. We're your hosts. I'm Howard Hyman. I'm James Blackwood. And we're, we're your home, home to everything, everything Charger sports. sports. This week we'll be previewing the Oxford Jamboree against the Winona Tigers. We have a few special guests coming on the show. Of those guests, those include head football coach Chris Cutcliffe and senior captain Gray McGowan. Today we have Gray McGowan. Uh, I'm a senior captain. I'm number 74. I play O-line and I'm committed to Yale. So tell us a little bit more about this commitment to Yale. So what influenced it? And Really, it was just, you know, obviously it's a Ivy League, so it's a great opportunity. But their, uh, their coaches really set them apart and their recruitment, just the way they handled it. You know, they were the first ones to reach out and, uh, you know, take a chance on me and the first ones to, to offer me and invite me up to campus and get me on like to a camp and all that so they really set themselves apart and then also you know I just love love the city that it's in I love the the campus is great and it's also like an hour and a half from New York which will be fun so yeah so this is going to be your first season back at Oxford right originally transferred what's how has the mindset changed being more with your hometown friends? Uh, definitely just, you know, it's it's less uh, work. I mean, obviously, you know, still working hard, but it's a lot more fun just being with the guys that I've been playing with for the past, you know, three years and just practicing with and, like, really having that bond. And, you know, it's just it's a lot more fun. And it's definitely, you know, I'm coming into this season wanting to win, you know, and just – I mean, when we went on our senior retreat, you know, we went around and said, like, what we want to be known, like, what we want people to say for this year. And I just said, I want to be, I want to be Oxford to be known as, like, the team no one wants to, no one wants to play, you know. So that's really the mindset going into it, just win and dominate, but have a good time doing it. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, um, you know, then again, going back to saying with your, your friends, you know, it's a lot more fun. Do you feel like playing with people? you you know and like hanging out with do you feel like that drives you to play harder for them yeah, definitely definitely because i mean one you know it's it's like your brothers you know you want to win for them you want to win for yourself and two you know when you know somebody that well especially on the o-line you know because it's not just one position you know it's five guys working together so you really got to know each other like you got to be able to make a call within two seconds and be like i'm doing this you're doing that you know, and maybe the defense is stimming or changing while you make that call. So you got to make another one, and you got to check it. So it really helps if you know, because like me and Henry Rigsby, he's the right guard. Me and him can kind of just know, like, okay, I'm doing this, you're doing that, just because we've done it so many times together. So it definitely helps, and you know, it definitely drives me to play harder because yeah. I don't want to let my my brothers down. So yeah, and then y'all lost a lot of seniority and great leaders in the program. Mm -hmm. Um, but also you'll have a bunch of really good young guys. Do yeah. you feel like you, um, as a as a captain, really help them guide them in the right right direction? And how do you do that? You know, that's I wouldn't. I don't know if I am, but you know, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, just just kind of support them, especially the young guys like Drew. And we got a lot of young guys on the O line. Just kind of, you know, everybody's gonna make mistakes. I still make mistakes, and you know, I've been playing for three years and. I definitely made mistakes when I was a sophomore. So you just got to kind of support them and, like, help them know, like, no one's going to blame you. Like, we know you're going to mess up. We know you're going to make mistakes. Just keep working and keep going as hard as you can. Keep playing. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we we know that we played Winona in the Jamboree last year. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up being Winona's only loss all season. They went and won the state championship. Yeah. They were turning a lot. Um. How, how does the team feel? Like, do they feel like they have to prove something going into first jamboree? Definitely, definitely. Because like you said, you know, we lost a lot of seniority, but we've also got, like, a lot of really good athletes, a lot of, like, standout guys going to play college ball. So there's definitely a chip on the shoulder. Like, we want to prove that we're, we're just as good as we were last year and we can be better. So definitely want to go out and beat them. Yes, yes, of course, of course. What what is it like going in really hitting ha practice hard ramping it up to season? How yeah, do you so definitely definitely has been like a lot more practicing this summer than we used to do because we used to only lift and run 
I mean, you know, you were there. We used to only lift and run during the summer. And this this summer we started doing like an hour practice in just helmets two days a week. And then in July, like the last two weeks of July, we ramped it up and started practicing three days a week. And then in August, once August started, you know, school started and we could actually like hit and do all that and like put on pads. So we, we just put pads on last week and then Saturday we had a scrimmage, like the one team scrimmage, which is all of the Oxford's teams. So we definitely are uh, ramping up and you know, everybody, it's a very competitive class, you know, senior class. Like I said, you know, everybody wants to prove something. So everybody brings the energy. So I think that's probably one of our best things, but every, with with pads on it gets a little aggressive you know everybody wants to hit and just it's 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 uh aggressive and energetic i don't know that's really the best way i can put it but it's definitely ramping up hard you know everybody's ready to just everybody's ready for this friday but everybody's really ready for our first official game yeah and um but like you said with energy i know it's a really long season practicing every day yeah. not a lot of breaks how do you keep that energy throughout the season? You know, you just got to find, like, the thing that works for you to, you know, take a day off or whatever. Like, personally, I do yoga, like, two times a week, just stretch and relax. Like, I don't do, like, workout yoga. I do, like, it's called restorative because my mom was a yoga teacher for 15 years. So I just do it at home with her and just, like, chill, just get kind of, like, in that mind space and just, you know, restore myself. And then we also, with chance and everybody we do all the stuff you need to recover like we get a short day wednesday thursday we don't do much you know really monday and tuesday are like our only hard days of practice and then friday you know you come out you gotta you gotta ball out and just put it all on the line and you come back the next week ready to do it again and you know chance takes care of everybody he gets you all the pt you need if you need it he gets you ice baths if you need it like stretches you anything you need he'll get you so you really just got to find the thing that works best for you, you know. Could you tell us a little bit what either just the offensive line or the team does to strengthen that bond, just not just in football, outside of football, outside yeah. of practice? Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, I mean, I can't speak to the other position groups, but O-line, I mean, we all go out to eat together and just, you know, that's like our our hangout time. And, you know, I everybody rides with each other. Like, it's a lot – it's a lot like the older guys take care of the younger guys like if they need to ride somewhere the older guys are going to help them out and we all go out to eat together we're going we're actually going out to eat tonight so and every thursday before games we all go eat and eat and you know coach taylor sometimes has us has us at his house and his wife cooks and it's just like a big family thing like we don't ever really talk about football while we're there we just just like hang out with each other and just bond you know so um, going into after the Jamboree, you know, it's it's season time. Like, oh, yeah. You're getting into it. Um, <clears throat> what are your expectations for the season, or what do you want to see happen? I mean, I want to win. Like I said, I want to be the team that no one wants to play. So, I mean, I'm going in expecting to, you know, win it all, especially because I was at Baylor this past year, and we were successful there. And, I mean, I'll – I want to win. That's all. That's all I really want. You know, I want to do it the right way and all that, and I want to have a great season. But at the end of the day, winning is is a big thing for me. And you know, at the end of if at the last day, uh, or the morning after the last game, so the state championship. You know, whether we play in it or not, I want to be satisfied and known like I did everything I could to to win. You know, and if I didn't win and the guy across from me was just better than me, then that's all right. But I want to know, like, me and my teammates did everything we could to win. Do you have any personal expectations either? Or? Yeah, so uh, I want to be someone that the younger guys can look up to. And, you know, I just want to be someone that brings the energy. I've been trying to, trying to work on that because, you know, everybody gets down on themselves sometimes and just at practice, they're hot, they're tired, they don't want to be there. I'm just trying to pump everybody up you know especially going into those team periods where it's really like working hard you know and I I just want to I want to make all state too I think is what it's called all state first yeah. team yeah, yeah. and you know I didn't make that my sophomore year and I wasn't here my 
junior season. So I really want to make that and just just win. That's that's really all. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I think we're about to wrap it up. It was great having you. Yeah. Um. Big things ahead for Gray McGowan and uh, Oxford Charger football. We'll see y'all next week. I'm your host Howard Heinemann here with head Oxford football coach Chris Cutcliffe. Coach Cutcliffe, what are kind of your expectations going into this jamboree, and honestly, just throughout the season for this team? Yeah, so jamboree is an exciting time because it's the first chance that we get to have this year's team on the field. Um, you know, spring game, uh, we scrimmage ourselves, so it's the first chance we get to play uh, another opponent. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, to kind of get a really good gauge of where we are, um, you know, and really as the season goes on, our what we talk about all the time, what we focus on is just improving throughout a season. We want to be playing our best football in November and December. And so this is just kind of step one on that journey. What kind of improvements have, have you seen in your team from summer, from spring to summer to now fall camp? Yeah, I think we're playing faster um, on both sides of the ball and in the kicking game, but I think um, that comes from from – being really confident in what you're supposed to do, right? So I think as you gain confidence in what you're supposed to be doing, you're able to cut loose and play a lot faster. And I see that happening, which is a great sign. Uh, I've seen us tackle well defensively, which I think has been really encouraging. And um, offensively, one of the big points of emphasis always uh, is protecting the football. And so I think that we've done a good job of that as well. And like, talking about on a leader standpoint, have you seen your leader step up and kind of help with this improvement and kind of development of the younger guys? Yeah, you know, I, I think our senior class uh, has been outstanding. This has been a great group um, that really has kind of taken the reins going back to December and January of last year as we start building this team. Uh, I think they've done a tremendous job of owning that role uh, of being seniors. We have our uh, four team captains that were elected by their teammates. We have our leadership council, which consists of uh, a couple of 10th graders and then also juniors and seniors. And so uh, we kind of have a lot of you know different avenues for player leadership within the program. But uh, I think that has been exceptional this year. I think that group of guys has really responded to that calling. What, what's it like coming to practice every day with this coaching staff and this group of guys? Because it seems like there's an environment around it, like a culture that seems like everybody wants to get at it after it and kind of be there. Yeah, we have a special coaching staff, there's no doubt. Um, you know, a lot of guys uh, have been here for a long time. There's a good bit of continuity. Um, obviously, there's new faces that come in every now and then, but uh, I do think that there's a, a culture of high expectations. Um, I think our staff does a tremendous job of relaying that to our players, of modeling that themselves, right, holding themselves to really high standards. Um and holding our players to that same high standard. I think we do a great job as a staff as well. You know, I think you, you want to, you know, you, you, it's fun to work somewhere that's enjoyable, right, with people that you enjoy spending time with. And so, uh, you know, that's one of my favorite things about uh, our staff is it's guys that I really enjoy being around, enjoy spending time with, uh, and enjoy working together to, to try to accomplish something, all kind of point in the same direction. Would you say that aligns with your players' viewpoints? That Yeah, I think so. You know, I think that's – I think it's really – I've never been around a team where the coaching staff wasn't aligned and, and had a clear uh, culture build, had a clear you know staff culture, everybody heading in the same direction, a lot of continuity there. I've never been around a team where the players were able to do that without the coaches modeling that, right? I think if there's disconnect with the coaches, if there's ego with the coaches, if there's um, laziness or, or any of those things within the staff – uh, it's going to show up on the team as well. And so I think our, our coaches do a tremendous job of modeling that first. How does this team kind of separate themselves from teams in the past that you've had? Well, every team's unique. And so it's interesting because we talk about um, building a program and not just a team, right? So we have uh, an Oxford football program that we're very proud of. It has a proud history. There's certain things that we're going to stand by year in, year out. You know, and then within that, each team does have a little bit of its own identity, right? And each team, um, you know, kind of their duty, right? We talk about leaving a place better than they found it. So each team's duty, I feel like, is to leave the program better than it was one year ago, right? And I think that's what you're tasked with. And I think when you look at it that way and you take a lot of pride in what you do and you take a lot of pride in your teammates, then you're able to really fulfill that mission, right? So by the end of this season, it's our duty as the 24 Oxford Chargers to leave the program in better shape than it was in one year ago, regardless of what happened last year, right? Coming off of a state championship, that's still the duty of the next team, right? Um, because we feel like you're either getting better or you're getting worse, right? Mm -hmm. So it's our job to leave it in better shape than we found it. What kind of, what, what would you say are y'all's main principles that stays 
kind of consistent throughout every single team. Yeah, so we have five core values in our program um, that, that we're built upon and um, the way we structure our off season, the way we structure practice, everything we do, this kind of permeates through all of it. And so those five core values are energy, competition, family, toughness, and habits, right? And so those aren't, I think a lot of times you can make some core values, you, you put them up on the wall somewhere and they don't really carry a lot of meaning. Um, you know, I think you could ask any of our players on our team and they would tell you that those things are impactful and meaningful uh, on our program, right? This is who we are. We talk about it a lot. These are our expectations out of coaches, out of players, um, you know, and, and everything we do. Like I said, we kind of structure our week uh, in the off season, in the summer, during the season. Everything is really built around that idea. And so I think uh, that that is the kind of the common thread, right? And then, of course, our Charger for Life program is a common thread that's going to permeate through everything we do, right? And so Charger for Life for us, it's kind of twofold. One is we've, you know, we, we like to talk about how once you're a part of, of the family, right, you're a part of the team, that doesn't change, right? You, you, one of my favorite things is all the former players that come back to games and they're, they, they share just as much joy and success of the team as our current players do because it means something to them. It's important to them. Uh, and then also the other aspect of Charger for Life is we're trying to prepare you for life after football, right? Life after high school, right? We want you, whatever that next step is, whether that's heading to college, maybe playing football, maybe not, whether that's heading into the workforce, whatever that next step is for you, uh, we want you to be really well prepared for it. And so we try to work intentionally on helping guys create great habits, learn how to set goals, learn how to monitor their progress towards goals, uh, you know, and, and really develop as a young man. Mm-hmm. How, how important would you say that kind of developing kids along with, you know, trying to play football, but just through their personal life, how important is that to you? It's extremely important to me. That's why I wanted to coach. Um, my dad uh, was, was a longtime football coach. Uh, my mom was a first grade teacher. And so as a kid, for me, I knew I always wanted to coach, but it was because I saw the impact that they had on young people that they were able to interact with. And so that was something that was important to me. Um, when I became a head coach, you know, I think one of the things people talk about is uh, you learn great life lessons from sports, right? That's a kind of a common theme. Um, but I didn't want that to be something that we just hoped happened. I wanted to be intentional about creating an environment where we were, in, you know, we were doing that um, we were doing it methodically, right? We had a plan in place to make sure we were teaching the lessons that we wanted our, our young men to learn. With with this jamboree coming up, how important is this season overall, as in just like how important would it say is to you? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I, I think, like I said, I think number one, there's the idea that every season we owe it to Oxford Charger football to leave the program better than we found it. And I think each team is tasked with that. Personally, for me, I feel like I always owe it to to all of our players, but certainly to our seniors, right, to maximize our potential with this team, right, because, um, you know, they've paid a lot of, of time, a lot of uh, energy, a lot of workouts, a lot of practices, a lot of early mornings, all these different things. Um, and so I think I feel personally like I owe it to them to make sure that they're set up to have the best possible senior season, right? And so I think that's something that that I, um, you know, that that I take very seriously year in year out. What kind of preparation does go into? Is the preparation different between a real game and a jamboree? No, it's really not. We we try to um, use this as a dry run of a game week, and we try to do everything like we do in a game week. Um, there's a little bit. You know, there's there's not film on your opponent to study because it's the first game of the year, um, so that I guess is a little bit different. But uh, you know, but as far as uh, from our standpoint as coaches, um, we've prepared like we prepare for a game, right? We're running our week of practice like we do for a regular game week, uh, because next week when it really does count, uh, we want we want to be firing on all cylinders, right? We want everything ready to roll, so we're not having to. You know, hey, this is what we do on a Tuesday practice during the season, right? We want that stuff taught. We want those uh, routines learned, right, so that next week we're just rocking and rolling and putting in work. What does that preparation look like during the actual season? Yeah, so we're pretty routine oriented, um, you know, and and so uh, and I think that I think all of us kind of thrive on routine a little bit, um, you know, and so uh, for us, you know, our Monday practices look the same pretty much every Monday all season. Our Tuesday practices look the same, et cetera, et cetera. We work different situations, different days. Um, you know, coaches have different, um, so like from a game planning standpoint, you're preparing different parts of the game plan throughout the week uh, to work those situations on different days. 
Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, there's a big picture that kind of goes into that. Uh, playing J- freshman and JV games on Monday nights is a big part of that. Uh, that's a point of pride for us is, is we really try to run the best freshman and the best JV program in the state of Mississippi, right? We really want to develop all of our players ninth through 12th grade. So I think that's a huge part as well of preparing for a game that maybe doesn't show up directly on the scoreboard on, on Friday night, but it, we know it does long term, especially it has a real positive impact on the team, on the program. How does, how does this constant state of routine kind of impact your team? Yeah, well, I think if you're not – so, like I said, I think everybody kind of thrives on routine. I think when you know what the expectations are, most people want to meet expectations. So if they're clearly communicated and we know what's expected of me, most people are going to rise to the occasion because they want to please, they want to do well, right? Nobody goes out on the practice field wanting to do poorly, mm-hmm. right? And so I think when you establish routines, it lets everybody feel comfortable in that environment. But then I also think it's my job as a coach to throw curveballs every now and then because there are going to be things that happen in a game that are a little bit different than anticipated, and we got to be able to handle those, right? And so, um, you know, I think you have to be a little bit careful being too routine-oriented because then when something goes – you know, goes different on Friday night. If there's a lightning delay, I mean, whatever it may be, uh, you're not prepared to handle that. So we do throw curveballs every now and then. But um, you know, like I said, for the most part, we like we like being in routine because we like everybody to clearly know what's expected of them so that they can perform at a high level. What kind of what kind of challenges does this Wyoming team throw at your team? Oh, uh, Wyoming is a defending 3A state champion. Um, they're very well coached. Joey Tompkins is a friend of mine. Their head coach. He does an incredible job. Uh, they have a dandy dozen player at linebacker. Um, they will be well coached. They will be physical. They'll have athletes on both sides of the ball. Um, so it will be an excellent test for our team right here off the bat. All right. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, Thanks thank for your you. Time. Appreciate y'all. Of course.